Okay, I guess I got to do that again. Welcome to the April April 3rd, 2024 Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting. Um, Jordan is going to be joining us, but uh, um, we'll be a little late. So we should have a full, uh, full complement of commissioners. Uh, public comment. Uh, the only person from the public is Kent. Hey, Kent. Hello. I just wanted to point out there was an article in the Gazette today about a um, commission on clean energy infrastructure siting and permitting that's put out its recommendations and they're recommending a streamlined process for both large and small um, green energy projects. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot in there addressing issues of Citing there's a there's a little bit, but um, I know that's a topic that people here are interested in. So you might want to check out. I could send out some links if you're interested. The it's a fairly long report that is mostly talking about um, a streamlined permitting process for green infrastructure projects, mostly solar arrays, wind farms, and supporting infrastructure for them. I'll, I'll send up some, some links to that. Thank you. I, I did, I did read it and I, I'm wondering if there's a, um, a larger report out there somewhere that we could get our hands on. It might be on the state's website. Yeah, there's, there's a full report. It's pretty long. Okay. Um, you have to dig down a few levels of links to get to it, but okay. um, I'll, I'll send it out. It's not All right. Th thank you very there's much. And there's one short section on siting that does give a nod to um, environmental considerations and things like that, but uh, it's it's pretty brief. And I don't see anything about, for example, permitting local zoning to regulate solar projects, which is, of course, not allowed at this point. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll send you links and you can look at it for yourselves. Th th thank you. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. Chair report, tree warden report. So just a couple of updates. Um, the, the city has not received uh, it comments from Mass DOT regarding the Main Street redesign. So the we are still waiting for Mass DOT's uh, review of the 75% design and uh, the MEPA review that uh, was uh, the public meeting that was back in January. So more information to come. Uh, and when that's um, available, that will all be posted uh, on the uh, the um, Main Street Redesign tab on the uh, Office of Planning and Sustainability website, which I can actually get to everyone once it's there. Um, I wanted to give a quick update on the Spotter Lanternfly um notification so and going back and forth with um um donna uh the director and karen our our, our gis um specialist at dpw and i'm sure that's not her exact title so please forgive me for not getting it correct what well, what i think um in a conjunction with the um conjunction with the arbor day press release the spotter we're going we're going to post on the DPW website that the spotter lantern fly uh letter the condensed letter the last one that Molly and Sue worked on that'll actually be posted in text under um what they call um a news flash new, new, news flash notification which has a ton of followers and then what on that web on that drop down box or that um, text you'll see there'll be a link to actually get you to the actual complete letter itself um, which will be in like in a uh, probably in like a pdf or a word doc and then from there there'll also be links and photographs uh, on that news flash as well um, to mdar's reporting website and photographs of if we can get them all of the spotter lantern fly in its uh, different life stages um, using um, hopefully using that uh, miniature poster poster that uh, MDAR put together that has like those round circles. So um, my goal is to try to work with Karen to get this put together on our website uh, so it coincides with the release of the 
um, the press release from the mayor's office about Arbor Day, so they can act, people can actually go right to that. Um, and if um, and if we could get fancy, we could put a QR code on the press release so people can just use their phones. Like if you read the press release on your cell phone, you could actually just go right to it. Um, sort of like what we've done with the uh, setback agreement. So that's where that's at. So that is in process. I sent everything to Karen. Hopefully I'm going to meet with her over the phone tomorrow morning to continue to discuss that. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you, and thank you for everyone's hard work. And I, and the other thing I wanted to mention too, is that we can now also use, we can talk about this in the meeting a little further, but we have the, uh, the door hanger mock-up of uh, the pocket door hanger. We can now actually use that as um, potentially canvassing the places where we have found um, the tree of heaven and actually putting it on the door hanger um, as, as well, which I think might be more effective than mailing it, especially if it's a, um, especially if it's a, a residence that has multiple um, tenants or if it's an apartment building or if the owner doesn't even live there, it's rented, it's an individual house that's rented. So, okay. Um, and that's, I think, the other thing I wanted to ask is that we typically do not have a meeting in the second, the second Wednesday of April. Are we okay with suspending our April meeting? The, which would be not, uh, not next week, but the week after. So the week before, we're going to do our first planting and then our, we will reconvene uh, the first week of uh, the first Wednesday of May. Does anyone have any, That's okay. um, mm -hmm. everyone okay with that? Okay. I, I think um, I'm feeling pretty confident um, and I don't want to speak for, for other folks, but as far as like the spring planting, which we'll get into later on, I'm feeling confident that we are, um, you know, everything is starting to sort of come together. So again, we can talk about it at more length. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I think we need to approve the minutes. You know what? I forgot all about that. Yeah. You're right. I was getting all excited. I was trying to, never mind. Okay. <laughs> We're taking things out of order today. It's all good. All right. All right. So I have nothing else. If no one has any questions, then we will revert to re, uh, reviewing and approving the minutes from the last meeting. So I, uh, I've read them already, so I'm at your pleasure. Whenever people want to read them, make a motion, have comments. I've read them. Okay, excellent. I've read them too. Yeah, I'm all set. I do have one comment. Is everybody's done reading? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, on the third bullet from the bottom on the second page under the header spring planting arbor day i'm just curious it says north maple one resident wants a specific tree and one doesn't want one and i know which one doesn't want one what either which residents wanted the specific tree and do you know what it was it's probably either 154 or 163 North Maple. I don't have that information at the tip okay. of my fingers. I, I will okay. get it though. I'll make a note. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I guess nothing needs to be changed there. I just okay. had a question. Thanks. All right. You're welcome. It's 106. 106 North Maple is the which you and I think discussed is not the, uh, that's an actual location where we had an ash tree in the tree belt. We cut it down and then there's an ash tree on the back of the sidewalk that's private. So we okay. were trying to cite the tree, I think over to the left of that. And it was like right in front of their house, right. And right in front of um, their sidewalk and okay. right near an overhead utility wire. So I think it's worthwhile going and having a conversation with the the resident um, just okay. to get the take on what they're going to do with the tree, if they're going to do anything with it, okay. the ash tree that's left. So, but I'll circle back with you. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, can we have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? I will make a motion 
to accept the minutes as they were presented. Wonderful. We have a second. I second. All right. We have a motion and we have a second on the floor. Any discussion? No discussion. Bonnie, could you please uh, do a roll call? I can. Rich Persoliti. Uh Yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. Richard Parrish? Yes. And Jordan? Jordan, are you there? Well, I would have to say it would be um, an abstain, I guess. He wasn't here last oh, week. Right. right. It doesn't matter. Apparently, you can still actually uh, vote to approve. Oh, oh, oh. I, right, right, I right. That came up. Okay. All right. All right. Moving moving right along. Um, uh, Rich Parrish is going to give us a winter pruning update or... Not an update, I guess, because winter pruning is is winter pruning over now. It Even though it's over, okay, so it's not an update; it's a synopsis or correct con conclusion. So please uh, feel free, your co-host, as I said before, so you can sh screen share. Okay, let me let me share a screen here. Okay, do you see this document? Yes. Sure. Yes. All right. So, um, okay. So, the, the winter pruning project, uh, it involved, you know, the pruning of young city trees and was carried out by volunteers from Tree Northampton in coordination with the city's tree warden. And of course, the goals of this project first were to assure the structural integrity of young trees so as to optimize their future growth and strength. Uh, the second goal was to remove branches that might compromise pedestrian safety on sidewalks and to keep the trees free from traffic interference, uh, both of which are very significant items. Uh, and go right towards safety. In total, there were 623 young trees were pruned on 55 different streets of the city in all seven wards. And these were typ typically done on a street by street basis just to optimize our efficiencies. And the target trees included those located in the city's tree belt or the right of way plus those setback trees planted since 2018 under the setback with agreement system. Uh, uh, setback trees on private property planted prior to then uh, just revert to the homeowner's responsibility and were not included in this work. Uh, and I'll say that the, the selection criteria uh, for pruning were 2021 planted trees or those trees planted in the year 21 or earlier that had either not yet been pruned or those not pruned in the past three years or so. Uh, the pruning treatment for these trees ranged anywhere from just very minor to in the, in the younger trees uh, to significant uh, removals in older developing trees. And typically as this work proceeded, nearby mature trees were evaluated and some branches may have been removed to avoid sidewalk and street interference on those larger older trees. And this often addressed an immediate safety concern and, and may have helped to avoid calls uh, to the DPW for removal of problematic branches from uh, for the neighbors in that area. So the and these trees 
uh, were not included in the following summary, but probably numbered all up to a hundred mature trees that were just uh, touched for safety issues. Okay, so now the count of the trees that were pruned. See in this table uh, on the left, the year that the trees had been planted, starting from 15 up to 2021, and then the middle column, the number of trees that were pruned in this season uh, relative to the years that those trees had been planted. And then the last column was just the total of trees that were planted in that year, regardless of pruning. So the, the right column is the total population of trees planted. And the middle column is those that we pruned this year. Uh, so we can see that uh, probably the, the largest group were the, were the younger trees, those planted in 2018 through 21. Uh, those uh, received the, the greatest amount of attention. And, and often those uh, were the first time that these had been pruned. Uh, so they were very deserving of uh, or in need of treatment. And then where possible, we went back to some of the older trees uh, for, the, for their second or third pruning. Uh, the, these older 2015 through 17 trees are typically much larger and just required a lot more of attention. Um, so the, and then in addition to these young trees here, the, uh, there were an, a, about 125 mature trees. Those planted prior to 2015 uh, were pruned mainly on King Street up by the the VW dealership and in, and in the Village Hill neighborhood. Uh, Village Hill, there, there's of course a lot of large mature trees there that have had uh, relatively little attention over the years and uh, really required some attention. So I think there was a large improvement made to the uh, in that Village Hill neighborhood. So where were those, uh, the trees that were pruned, where were they located? As I mentioned, they were in all seven wards. Uh, and since the trees are not, the, the young trees are not distributed evenly through all the different wards. So of course the, the pruning will not be distributed evenly also, but uh, we see that uh, all the wards were, uh, were visited and both in uh, looking at the, the database that I used for planning the pruning and then didn't drive bys, uh, I think we were able to cover you know, a wide range of the city and hit those trees most in need. And I would say just as a, in a personal statement, I think I was very pleased with the, the work that was done uh, particularly on the you know, the gateway streets into the city, I, I think you'll find that the trees are looking in good order uh, and will make a favorable impression to the folks driving in on those streets. But, so now the manpower involved in this effort. Uh, again, this was under the kind of the umbrella of Tree Northampton, which is an all volunteer organization. Myself. I was the organizer of the initiative, and I mentioned that another member of our commission here, Jen, uh, Jen Werner, was also one of our volunteer pruners. But in total, 18 volunteers attended a November introductory training class that we held. Uh, Twelve of those volunteers went on to participate during the pruning season. The pruning season uh lasted over about three and a half months from starting in December 6th and ending on March 20th. Uh, the ending was chosen as trees were starting to bud out significantly and uh, 
So we did not want to compromise trees that are just starting their uh, spring growth. So five of the 12 volunteers were experienced and the others were generally being mentored by the experienced folks. And it's important to mention that one of the volunteers, uh, Jay Gerard, was a professional arborist, and he participated in most of those work sessions as, as certainly as, you know, working right along with us and also mentoring uh, the group in general. So, and that arborist himself devoted about 31 work hours uh, to this effort on 12 separate work days. But in total, the volunteers devoted about 300 total hours pruning in that three and a half month period. Uh, and uh, this has certainly been the largest pruning effort by the volunteers, uh, in my experience, since uh, the, this young tree program started, uh, it has been carried out certainly in years past, uh, often with Rob uh, Postel leading that. But I think just the number of volunteers and the number of trees that we were able to address is probably the most significant this year. And I think the, the larger number of trees handled corresponds the growing population of young trees that are out there. And then due to the ongoing, ongoing growth, all those older trees, we're now having to go back and uh, address them, you know, a second or third time. So kind of the effort is kind of say compounding each year. Uh, so in, uh, in summary, I think it was a, a very successful year in planting. I think, uh, I think a, a, a real service was done uh, to our canopy by the volunteers. And with that, I will end and ask if there are any questions or discussions. Yeah, Molly. Um, so you did a lot of trees. Um, do you have to do a similar amount next year and the year after? Mm -hmm. Probably not as many. I think since we we addressed a lot of them this year, uh, which may reduce the need, say for next year, and particularly mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, the tree planting count has gone down a little bit, so that might uh, relieve you know alleviate some of the need. But I think still, yes, there certainly will be need next year and pretty much in all subsequent years, uh, but perhaps not uh, to this magnitude. And after the initial pruning, do they have to get pruned another time? Oh yeah. Um, ideally, we try to hit them when they're about uh, say three years old, and then again, uh, five or six years old. And depending on the tree type, perhaps again, you know, an eight or nine, Wow. And then it's, and you know, tall trees, we can only do so much until when they get tall enough, they're kind of beyond our reach of working from the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, it, you know, the, uh, the contractors or others may need to do it. Uh, the small underwire trees, you know, we're able to, to work with those for, uh, you know, for several years of their life since uh, they're easy to reach from the ground. Wow, great work. Yeah, I just want to say this this is uh this is incredible. Uh really nicely done and I just want to say thank you to all the volunteers. Uh Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh Rich, you in particular for actually spearheading this. Uh you've done a fantastic job. And I also want to uh shout out to Jay as well uh mm -hmm. doing all the pruning. Uh uh, and volunteering all this time as a as a certified arborist. Um, uh, Rich, could you would you mind sharing that document when you have a minute? Just send it in an email if you haven't already. This document, but to the group or to you, 
Uh, to the group, sure it would be great if the group would yeah. like to go through it. It's just I I will need to use this for our totals for next year, uh, for our Tree City USA. Yes. Yes. Uh, award. So. I. I have a quick question. When you're done. Yeah, I'm, I'm all. I'm. Uh, okay. Um. I'm, I'm one. One thing I think that's important to understand too is uh, early tree training. Uh, that Rich was heading up um, really uh, mitigate storm damage in the future mm -hmm. because you're setting this like structure and, um, you know, having a main leader. So it's really like way out that um, uh, it makes it makes a difference, you know, mm -hmm. in the city. Um, and then my question is, is, um, would it be useful or is there a way to communicate to the city council or slash the mayor how much, um, I guess, hourly money is being saved by the mm -hmm. efforts of the volunteers? Because, the you know, um, I just think about sustainability of a program um, and funding, you know, continuing to fund a position at your level, Rich, or, you know, um, that this is big money that they're saving, you know, by, you know, the organization and the volunteers and stuff like that. I think, uh, I don't know that people really know the significance of financially significance, you know, I don't know if we can do that. Uh, maybe I can sort of address that the dollar the dollar amount or the amount of trees removed or planted is codified in the uh, Tree City USA uh, documentation that the mayor signs. It's also sort of codified in a uh, budget presentation when DBW does their budget presentation. But um, I think dialing down into this level of detail of uh, like where they were pruned, what years they can, you know, those, those kinds of things are, would not rise to that level. But I do, I do agree with you wholeheartedly that if you were to extrapolate the hours and then apply them um, to a, per, you know, to a prevailing wage contract for a contractor, you're talking about probably three to whatever the value would be, would you you're talking three times the value or the three times the amount of hours and you apply the prevailing wage rate, it, it would be astronomical. I mean, in my whole career here, um, we never, uh, we were all, you know, the majority of the street trees you see today that were planted since I've been here, with the exception of the ones from 2015 going forward. So from 2015 going back to 1989, um, didn't really have any, didn't have any young tree train done to them. So we have a whole, um, age class of trees that are that i see and drive by that i know i planted or i was part of the planting or they were planted you know because i have somewhat of a memory still even though i'm a little i still feel like i lose my memory at times but um they were never trained and then um even i'll give you an example um here's one good example just not to go too far down the hole but if you're standing in front of uh helen hills chapel and you're looking at the chapel there's a very large mature uh elm tree if you look right to the left, there is a Liberty Elm tree that was planted um, probably in the mid-90s. That tree actually had never had a young tree train. And what ended up happening is that tree split right down the middle. Um, but the tree was still viable. So what we did is we, um, we hired Bartlett Tree to actually come in and um, do uh, um, some structural pruning uh, pruning to uh, mitigate the risk for more failure and they added uh, several rods in the trunk so those are the kinds of things that that's just an example of something we caught that we could save but there's many other things that as Jen alluded to that become storm damage and then the tree is not salvageable so this is really why this is important and this is also zooming out 10,000 feet a little bit like uh, other communities that I um, am familiar with or other tree wardens that I 
am familiar with that are actually receiving a lot of grant money for tree plantings. Um, they don't have um, this kind of um, support when it comes to the young uh, young tree train and aftercare, not just like for two years, but like successive years. Like, you know, we're talking will be 10 years, you know, which is pretty fantastic. So uh, and so I think a lot of communities are going to struggle to to maintain these trees once they're planted um, and hopefully avert the kind of storm damage. Or, you know, not even storm damage. You just think about a low branch in, a, in an Amazon truck, right? Just, I mean, the Amazon trucks on this residential street wipes out everything. You know, so just just from that perspective it, and many others, I think this is great. So I can't say enough about it. And I thank you very much. It, it was a labor of love. It is. I want to just chime in and say this is all your your presentation is so terrific in your leadership. And um, this is just amazing because as we've been planting them, there has been some anxiety um, about, you know, how we'll ever keep up. And this is just amazing. It's terrific. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Rich, if you wouldn't mind, stop, if you could stop sharing your screen. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. Um, let's see. Our next um item of business is setback tree planting initiative. So most of you, I hope, we have had a chance to look at the setback brochure. So since that since I sent that brochure, um, I had a couple of typos that we noticed and a couple of uh, changes that were made. So I have a new brochure. Um, so I can screen share that um, brochure if I can, uh, if you want to talk about that. Does anyone have any questions before we dive into this? About the setback agreement. Uh, did you all get to see the door hanger as well? Okay. All right, uh, let me just pull this up. Hold on one second. Let's see. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay. So this is the the layout, the present layout that we have. So Marcus Marcus Printing's been really fantastic. It's been a lot of back and forth. But this is what we um this is what we ended up with. So just a brief summary. Um we added um Enhanced outdoor recreation. Uh, they cleaned, they sort of cleaned this up. They sort of realigned it. So it's when it's folded, it's going to be perfectly in all the creases. Um, on the in the middle panel, um, I sort of uh, rewrote uh, about the partners, uh, um, City of Northampton Tree Warden, uh, um, just sort of rewrote this to sort of capture like pruning and pruning of trees to mitigate risk and improve vigor, sort of to capture like industry um, language. And then in, um, put a QR code in there that actually gets people right to the website of the tree warden. Same thing with the uh, Urban Forestry Commission. Um, did the same thing, QR code, change the, uh, just the meeting so they, people understand um, where, uh, you know, we, that we meet virtually at the moment and they can find that all in the city's uh, agenda Um Agenda Center website. The QR code gets you there as well because there is an agenda link on the commission's website. Um, and then uh, Tree Northampton um, didn't really do anything with the text, just added a QR code so you get right to their website as well. So 
if folks are interested in volunteering or they want more information about Tree Northampton, they can just um, grab that as well. Uh, and then um, on the back on this side, um, item number one, uh, fill out the setback tree request form, which we just we kept the Google um, we had to keep the Google Drive link, but then we just added a QR code, which just opens it easily on your phone, which is really easy easily used uh, with your hands. So you could actually bring that up. Like if you're doing a site meeting with someone, you could actually bring that up right there at the site meeting and fill it out, help them fill it out or show them here it is on your phone. You can fill it out. It's very easy. Um, obviously during the site visit, tree location species and expectation of care during the growing season will be discussed. Uh, three is complete to provide a permission uh, and agreement form, which requires a notarized signature and submit to the tree warden. So I also put a QR code, which again goes right to the, tree warden website um, where the forms and publications are. So that form is right there and easily uh, available instead of actually trying to add the form to like the door hanger. Um, I thought that would be just as easy. Um, so if people wanted to actually read the form to understand what it meant by filing at the registry of deeds. And then uh, four and five uh, Sue worked on and just um, sort of uh, re uh, reworked the language a little bit and it looked great. Um, and then uh, a setback tree. So we changed the terminology instead of calling it a program. We, I, we talked about changing it from either program or to an initiative. And I think that initiative, I personally think, and this is again up for debate with all of you, and I'd love to hear what you have to think. But I think this is this is like a renewed initiative that we're starting. So um, we have had success in the back, uh, in the past with tree, um, with um, setback plantings, but not like we're sort of, we're sort of going to be more aggressive or we're going to market this more to residents, I think. So I think initiative, I think is more fitting than program, um, but that's my take. Um, just some text changes in, the, in this section here where we, uh, section one and chapter 87 were reversed. Um, and what happens after my tree is planted at DPW employees pick up debris staked if necessary, install slow release watering device. So I struggled with that to try to, I didn't really want to put, uh, I didn't want to use the word tree diaper. So I thought slow release watering device would work. And then, uh, this is where the typo is during needs to be capitalized capital D, um, you know, DPW will augment this watering device. So, which means we would put like a water bag on top of it as well. Um, and then, um, you know, any questions about, um, in the preceding years about pruning, you know, please email tree Northampton with any questions or concerns, or they can flip over to the other side and just hit the QR, hit the QR code. And then, um, just, uh, this, um, approved planting list. This is what, um, this is what we, uh, came up with on a couple of runs. And those trees That's are a quick all... comment. I apologize if this was already noted. Um, very, yes. very minor under the heading of what is the Northampton permission and agreement form. Yep. First line where it says N notarized. Should be A notarized. Good okay. catch. Okay. Duly noted and notarized. Uh, the, this is the, you know, this is the list of trees that we talked about. I yes, see one. another typo. Where, where, um, let's see, where was it? Um, the right where your arrow is the last line, second to last line under what is the Northampton permission and agreement for, yep. um, property is missing a P. Uh huh. You are oh. correct. Look at that. You got wow. some eagle eyes there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Rich, I've yeah. got one more sort of nitpicky thing. Shoot. This so, is why we're having this discussion. Yep. All right. This, this seems to be the time for it. But uh, 
<laughs> under how to get a free setback tree. Number two, it seems like there's yep. a preposition missing from during the site visit tree location. Like during the yeah. site visit uh, tree location. Maybe comma the tree location. Or the tree location site visit. Yeah, that would make more sense. I guess tree location site visit. Or, or you could site visit it to determine tree location or something. During the site visit, comma, tree location, species, and expectation of care will be discussed. Like about during the site visit, we will discuss tree location, species, etc. I agree. The way it's written is, I didn't like the way it sounded when I read it. Grammatically, that clause yeah. during the site visit tree location needs some help. During the site visit, uh... we will discuss. Yeah. We will discuss uh, tree location, species, and expectation of care during the growing season, period. Does that sound yeah. all right? Yeah. Okay. During the site visit, we will discuss. Okay. I can just make a little notes on my agenda sheet here, but I can, I can send those. Um, okay. All right. Your a, a comment in the you know, what happens after my tree is planted? Yes. There's no mention in there of the homeowner watering their tree. See? That that is that is correct. And that should be a expectation, absolutely, that such that the city doesn't have to or has less need to. Well, that's that has been problematic in the past. So that's why on bullet two over here, we're going to actually talk about expectations of care. Oh. Nope. But the pro the okay. problem is, is that people say they're going to water the trees and then they don't water the tree or they water the tree and then they get their water bill and then they don't want to water the tree any longer. So, um, you know, and part of the, part of the problem is, is that, it's not a problem, but it's it's you know we are our ex, we are asking people to give a give the city permission to actually plant to to you know basically have an easement on their property to yeah. plant this tree. So we have a responsibility level to maintain this tree, and part of that is watering. So if the homeowner can water it, that's wonderful. I appreciate it, and we will take it off the list. But if the homeowner can't water it, um you know I, I give you an example we planted a couple of trees on north street and um the woman that lives there is 80 years old and she said i can't water the tree i just can't carry the buckets the hose doesn't go far enough i'm not strong enough you know so that's sort of okay. yeah okay is it well it, as long as it is part of the discussion so that they're it's clear that they, they will benefit if they water yes okay yeah, they will. And I think what I think what we need to do is probably have a little cue card of like just bullet points that we want to touch on whoever is talking to the residents um, in these first, um, you know, these first four or five, probably the first four steps to make sure that anyone that's talking about a setback planting has, um, you know, we're all sort of um, speaking the same language or getting the same message across. Like a script. Yes, yes. So, okay. Um, anyone have any um, questions on the approved planting list? I've got a, a question. I'm just noticing now that there are no oak trees mentioned. Is that is that deliberate or is that an oversight? Um, well, I think um, it was deliberate because the fact that our overall canopy, we, we have 20, over 20% 20 of our inventory can, canopy was oak. 
So I, you know, we, we were encouraging people not to plant oak, uh, especially a setback. Also, I think the other problem is, is that we are encouraging people to plant like white oak trees from the white oak group versus the red oak group. And so when you get a tree from the white oak group, it's usually, you know, they're not small, they're large. And a lot of people had aversions. And I remember talking to Rob about this, had aversion to trying to, you know, plant a large white oak on their property that could, you know, or an oak in general that could impact their, um, you know, impact their foundation, impact the sidewalk, their sidewalk. So, so there's really two reasons why it was it wasn't put on there. It doesn't mean that we can't offer them. It's just not, um, it's not something that we put out there. Just like we don't have sugar maple. I mean, there's a lot of places as in a setback location on a street where there's not a lot of salt used that we could actually probably plant a sugar maple for people if they wanted them. So that would be like a special request. Hmm. Um, because people do still like sugar maples, uh, especially on North Maple Street. Get the, I get that answer. Every time we planted a ginkgo, how come this isn't a maple? I'm like, oh, boy. Like, well, let me tell you a story about the sugar maple. So, um, but yeah, that, that's that's the, um, but I'm more than willing to put oak back on there if if the commission feels like you want to have that as a, an upfront selection. I would almost suggest you put swamp white oak just to try to get people okay. thinking that you know there's a lot of different kinds of trees that's why i kind of like the way it is because i don't think people know a lot of these trees and we're talking about diversity okay I don't know. or if you're gonna put it put white oak does swamp white oak require to be pretty wet a lot of the time no it's no. actually urban tolerant. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, good... yeah, we've planted a lot of them in undesirable places because of that. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, and they seem to do, they seem to do really well. They're That's great a great tree. tree. So I can put, you know, oak. I could put oak from the white oak group in parentheses, but that then people are going to mm -hmm. be like, "What does that mean?" What about you know, white oaks, plural? White oaks, plural. Or you could just put swamp white oak and then they'd be like, mm -hmm. oh, can I have a pin oak or whatever? You know what I mean? And then we yep. could just say, well, you know, we'd encourage you to blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, there certainly are other, you know, if somebody yeah. said, oh, I want a Carolina silver bell. If they knew what that was, I would be like, yeah, sure. Woohoo, <laughs> let's do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Well, we can, we have plenty of room. We can add it. Let's add it. Okay. I think like what Jen said is the swamp white oak actually opens a conversation that's educational. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Okay. Any other comments? Thank you for doing, getting this moving. Well, uh, you're you're welcome, uh, Mark. Uh, then Mark, you know the question is is that I uh, we ch you know we try to make this so it's universal so we can continue to use it for a long period of time. Um, so hopefully, uh, we have basically uh, sort of um, taken the personalities out of this, and this is like my I took my name off of this because not because mm -hmm. I'm leaving anytime soon, but if we print two thousand of them, let's say, and you know, in three or four years' time, I retire and. You know, people from Tree Northampton retire and there's other people, you know, you want to have just, you know, this mm -hmm. is the city of Northampton initiative with the commission and with Tree Northampton. So it's best to sort of keep, I think, names off of it. If they want to know anything about any of us, they can just go to any one of these little uh, QR codes. So, all right, I'll, I'll make those changes. Um, and then what I'll do is I will send, I'm supposed to meet with Dave from Marcus Printing, maybe either tomorrow or Friday for this, but for the, for both of these. And I want to show you the other one while we have, um, I got a couple of minutes. I'll show you the door hanger. Uh, let's see, stop sharing. Okay. Let me, let me just get the door hanger open. Uh, 
Okay, let me go back to the meeting. So this was, this is the, um, the door hanger. So basically that's the way it's going to be shaped. It's going to be cut along these lines right here with a keyhole. This is a die they already have, so we don't have to pay for a die. So this actually worked out. Um, just basically took the back of the brochure um, and put this on there with the same information and then just the city seal with city of Northampton tree initiative. So this can be universal to anything that we want, uh, any kind of messaging we may want to get across to residents. So it's for and everyone. And that's folded and glued. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. We don't have to fold. <laughs> no. And it's a little, and it's longer. It looks like it's eight and a half by 11, but it's actually longer. Uh, oh. actually it's i'm sorry it's 11 inches long i believe so if you take a document and fold it um you know trifold that's eight and a half tall that'll slide right in there and have enough room for the hanger so um that um the document hangs and people can just pull it out or they can take the pull hanger off if they want looks great okay all right so i, I will I will fix the. Are, are, is everyone comfortable with me just fixing what what we just talked about on the bro setback brochures, so, and then we can mm -hmm. actually run run some of them, so we can have them for Arbor Day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this yeah. uh, this hanger card that's made out of like cardstock or something. It's recycled, it's like, right? Yeah, it's a little heavier yeah. Uh, yeah. paper stock, so it's so more it's like paper. a cardstock. Yeah, I I don't know right. what the weight is but i did ask that question it's not like a yeah. manila folder it's a little it's between regular paper stock and what a manila folder thickness is yeah. i believe to give you an, it's just an example great There's is no it plastic. kind of shiny and coated i'm sorry what go ahead jen you go okay is it i'm i'm thinking of the ones we've had before where they they were kind of shiny or coated or something like. No. Okay. No, it's just going to be a on regular paper stock. But I mean, hopefully, if it's a door hanger, it's inside of a door under a cupola, of someone's porch, inside a storm door. It should be. It should be fine. That adds. Yeah, I just want to make. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I keep interrupting people. No, it's fine. It's just you start to do those different kind of coatings. It drives the cost up quite a bit. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's recyclable, like no plasticky mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, no, no, it's all it's paper. Any other any other? Oh, so two a couple two other things I, I did. Um, you know, I did have a conversation um, with Donna about this, the setback. Um, the initiative brochure, et cetera, and the door hanger. And she made us, she said, you might want to suggest that you talk to the commission, but when we're actually going to be going out and canvassing or targeting particular areas that we need to make sure that we communicate with the mayor's office and we communicate with the ward counselor, just so they're aware of the fact that we are, you know, going door to door and, you know, um, like if we decide to go to ward six using the data set that we collected of the prime setback locations and we're, you know, hanging uh, things on people's doors. We just got to make sure when the counselor gets a phone call that the counselor knows or when the mayor's office gets a phone call, they know that's all. Mm. Yeah. But at um, least, sure. Yeah. I have a, just a question about setback tree locations. Is it, did you say it's is it 20 feet from the right of way? 20 feet from the right of way. Yes. Okay. And if there's a sidewalk um, and the, far edge of the sidewalk is less than 20 feet it still stops at the edge of the sidewalk right not necessarily oh it could go beyond the sidewalk it can especially if you're in a old county layout that's 66 feet wide yep uh-huh so that's why unfortunately like <laughs> you every place we do this um i'll have to help vet them by finding a plan set to make sure that we are you know Either we can do it because it is still 20 feet or we can't do it. You know, but you, you those, would be, 
you'd be Are surprised. those plants available at the Registry of Deeds? Yes and no. Hmm. It takes a lot of work. You have to really, the, the best way to do it is obviously to get a, um, a, a book and page number for the property. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully they actually have done a recent survey. Mm -hmm. um, and wow. yeah, sometimes you can find a book and page or there's a reference in the deed and uh, when they file it uh, for a mortgage, like on the second to last page, um, there'll be a plan in the pl a plan of land in Florence from 1934. And then it shows like, you know, 50 building lots, which is all like, what's all like straw avenue plymouth all those streets like if you know i find plans all the time i've never seen before because i've had to find property pins to figure out what, what existing public shade trees whether they're public shade trees or not and then we you know we determine if they are and if they are then we're responsible for them but that's so, a clue i could look for property pins yes you can look for that property would show, pins. that that's, would give an idea that's the best clue most of them are going to be uh either um iron pipes yeah uh, that are going to be buried in the ground um a lot of times like the hide fire hydrants water boxes are usually right on the very edge of the public right away okay um on on sides that don't have sidewalks but the problem is that you need to know exactly what the right of way width is and then that's helpful then you can segue once you know the width you can segue into finding a property pin and if you only find one property pin across the street you take a tape measure and you go 50 feet and wherever that 50 foot mark is, that's the end of the public right of way. And then 20 feet from there would be your planting zone. If it's a 50 foot right of way. Correct. Cause they bury don't know. There are 33, they're, they're 33, they're 40, they're 50. Oh, oh. Um, okay. So it's kind of standard. Uh, and they're 66. And it's okay. all done in rods. Oh. So 16 <laughs> and a half feet, right? So How you much is it again? A rod is what? Six, 16 and a half feet is a rod. So, oh, I, I think I spent more time running around looking like I was a surveyor than I actually do writing Arbor's reports or doing just trying to find what's what. All right. Some some streets are very perplexing because there's very little monumentation, but there is a, a a document that says the street was accepted in like 1700. So then you just have to um, you have to find a pin. The other problem that you run into too is that uh, Turkey Hill Road, for example, is actually an old county road. It's 66 feet wide, Turkey Hill Road, I believe. Mm. But the way that it's uh, the houses that have been built there are all based on a 50 foot right away. So oh. there's, so you, you have to go and use what the surveyor, the, the most recent survey is. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah. Anyways, I'm sure you didn't want to, um, I didn't. Oh, you probably didn't one one last question on that topic. Yes. Do you yeah. have any inside information about Ryan road? Uh, About the width of Ryan road. Mm -hmm. It depends uh, what part of Ryan road. Okay. I'd have to well, look. You have to give me an address. And then Yeah, I well I'm going to I'm going to go and do a survey of the um possible planting sites on Ryan Road. Okay. But was, I am going to collect the addresses, but I was hoping to fill in a chart about whether it's a setback or a right-of-way tree, but I won't be able to tell for sure unless there's a sidewalk. Why don't I make a note and I'll send you an email of the of the uh, cuz the width varies and I can sort yeah. of try to give you an idea of where it varies. Oh, that would be fantastic. That would be really helpful. All right. Ryan Road with Molly. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. And actually, Ryan Road was not always Ryan Road. It was another name. So that's another problem, too. Oh, no. Streets have different names. So you go to the Registry of Deeds and type in the street that exists today. It doesn't show up. So oh. then you have to go You have to go on this. Um, they call them city block plans, and they're from the early 1900s. And we have them, they're copies that are in our server system, and they actually show all these street names. Huh. Wow. Of, uh, yeah, and I can't I can't think of any at the moment, but I, if it comes to me, I'll I'll blurt it out like a kid with no self-control. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll I'll take care of that as well. Thank you for thank you for all the input on the setback 
Um, and I'm excited about this. Um, any other questions before we move on? Okay. Uh, spring planting Arbor Day celebration. And I will, I'll stop talking. I'll let Sue and Jen take this one away if they would like, and then I'll just fill in if needed. <laughs> well, um, Jen's really the leader. I'm a helper. <laughs> and, um, so I'll defer to her. <laughs> oh boy. Well, you're, well, you're, uh, things. Well, why don't you talk about the Arbor Day, the, the first planting with the rotary, cause you've communicated with them. So. Okay. Well, um, the rotary has something called a day of service and they are, um, recruiting volunteers. They actually put a press release out too about, about this day of service, Saturday, April 20th, and then rain date, Sunday, April 21st. We're going to have one site this year. We're not going to have an overflow site. Um, we do, we have some leaders signed up, but we could use some more leaders so that we have good experienced people on quality control, make sure that they don't get buried too deeply. Um, I believe Jen, you staked out the sites. And the tree order is in progress. And um, Alicia was going to help get the dig safes together. Um, I put them in the tracker and let her know. Um, let's see what else is there to say. Can you think of anything else, Jen? The uh, so the the the. We staked out 12 sites. We're going to put in elms and uh, Kentucky coffee trees. Um, and uh, we have 12 sites. And I put the stakes in. Rich and I looked at them. I dig safe them. And uh, Alicia completed them before she went away. So that was like oh, one right. more day. We might have uh, been in trouble. But uh, that's all. It should be all. Uh, straighten away and um so that'll be the first planting and um rich and i went to the nursery the other day uh yes what day was it monday and um tagged a bunch of trees and put in an order and then he's also going to order some from uh chestnut ridge nursery and uh sue and i went through the various hopeful commitments we have for trees and tried to match them up and then we got like a buffer amount of trees that we typically use um and we have uh another dig safe completed that's ready to plant so that we already have the trees in the pen sue and i are going to go to look at the trees in the spring grove nursery to this week to check on to make sure they uh excuse me <clears throat> uh to make sure they made it through the winter and that they're in okay shape and um i was just thinking we probably could use some help if somebody was willing to go to the our tool shed and make sure the buckets are all like squared away. And that's the main thing to make sure the buckets are all, you know, just make sure we are set to do that. The um, kids are ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do have a, a date with the uh, high school on, uh, April 24th with a rain date for April 25th for the tree whip bagging with the high school science. <laughs> They're very excited, excuse me, to uh, do it. Great. I think, uh, um, I... and no, I'm building, I'm building um, a list of groups for the, you know, after our initial planting day, so. Uh, um. Another thing was uh, I drafted a press release and the theme was the fact that 
these invasive pests are um, that that our project this year for, for Earth Day slash Arbor Day with the Rotary is replacing trees that were destroyed by this invasive pest. And then I also um, included something about it. You know, another pest is the spotted lanternfly, and the tree warden wants people to contact the state if they see it and a little bit of information and telling people to, to look out for that. So kind of the theme of Arbor Day is turning out to be like invasive pests. And I listed the trees we're gonna to have to give away um, and that information. But I just drafted it though. We'll see what um, Rich and, and um, his boss think of it. And then it goes to the mayor and get that out. Um, Christina, I believe, is working hard on gathering up more setback commitments. We've had some new submissions. Um, reminds me, one of them was from England. We have to tell them, sorry, we can't do a setback in Eng Northampton, England. Um, the Tree Northampton Volunteer Forum gets a lot of people from Northampton, England. So um, I don't know if there's some way to like connect them all together, but um um, I had a victory for quite a few years. My uh, people on my street and I have been trying to get um, the owner of four lots, which is six residences on my street, Stoddard Street, to get setbacks because there aren't um, one side doesn't have any sidewalks and the other side has poor poor tree belt. And we did get the notarized forms back for all four lots. So that's like six trees that can be staked out and planted um, because the houses are set back away and the residents who live in them, you know, don't own them. And this larger corporation, Appleton Company, that owns a lot of properties, um, it was took a long time to get them to do the notarized forms but we have them which is which is really wonderful when you see um areas on a street like that where there's just no trees at all <laughs> and big lawns and like, having setbacks there is is going to be really nice for those residents so i'm really happy about that and that was a citizen who assisted you in getting yes a no, neighbor yeah an active I physically citizen went to the offices in Holyoke and talked to them. Right. We emailed and they had agreed to do it, but there wasn't any movement. And she managed to connect with somebody at the company who who got it done. So I'm really happy about that. That <laughs> folks can get trees. And we and we look forward to if anybody wants to help work on some of the Northampton housing authority the rental mm -hmm. properties because i think that's a real um hole in our tree canopy is we have densely populated rental properties and these wide open lawns and mm -hmm. you know, real heat islands and people living there that don't have control over their own yard and they don't have any trees and we've seen that in a number of locations in our city and so this is one of those that we've had success so i'm looking forward to planting uh one other uh thing that uh i have been involved with is um gabby immerman who uh came to talk to our commission about a commemorative tree planting and some other activities they're doing to uh, uh commemorate the anniversary of the M mill river flood right yeah Mill River. yeah um i've been in more recent contact and um ex there's a lot of uh it's complicated whether where we can plant it's grow fruit northampton it's complicated but anyway i'm in contact with her and um to see uh you know what we can do as uh in our traditional setup as you know, the the city purchasing trees and and then volunteers planting them versus uh, teaming up with them if they write a grant or something and we just 
use our volunteers and tools and know how to help them plant a different area that they want to plant. So um, I renewed that. I think they're aiming for the fall to do the work. So we have a little time to um, for me to it to explain the situation. And um, yeah, so I've been going back and forth with her. So so that's a good thing that we're connected. Thanks. I've them. wondered about that because the anniversary, I believe, is in May. Yeah, yeah. They have of a the bunch best. of activities. Yeah. Good. I can I can probably send you I could forward the brochures because she sent me the most recent stuff. There's all okay. these talks and a tour and it's it's pretty it's great. So I'll I make write myself a note to send those around. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, that's something I'd be happy to support with um sort of the logistics and communication around uh, trying to make that happen. Um, oh, great. Yeah, great. I'm happy to help with that. Um, yeah. It's nice that it's so far ahead that they're actually shooting for fall. So that gives us a big window for planning. Mm -hmm. um, I found that project interesting when she posed it to us. Mm. Um, in addition, I I can't help on the 20th. It's actually my birthday and I planned something a long time ago, but Whoa. I can help with prep. Thanks. I can mm -hmm. help prep and I'd be happy to investigate our tool shed. I'm not sure what you what's needed with the buckets, but we can circle back and I'd be happy to take care of that. Yeah, we can do that offline. I could great. That'd be great. I can talk to you about it. That'd be okay. really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thanks, Jordan. So the idea for that project is um that the collaboration with us would be for us to think about if there's any sites kind of along the corridor of the Mill River that might be plantable. So, so there's a couple things. The um, there is a unique. I, I'm not going to go deep dive because it's complicated. And uh, but, Rich, if you want to pipe in, you can. There's it's a complicated relationship because it's kind of city land that is an APR land that's leased to grow food in Northampton. Oh. So we so as like our typical tree program, we can only plant in the right away. Some of what they want to do is uh, some kind of, um, you know, riparian planting, I think. I'm not entirely clear. Um, so in that case, if it's deeper into the property, we can't provide the trees. But if they wrote a grant and got somebody else to purchase the trees or whatever they want to put in, we certainly could use our Tree Northampton volunteers to help run that project you know get our experts out there teach people how to do it plant however many they want to or even help them choose appropriate uh species at mm -hmm. you know and suggest species given what we know about our uh overall canopy percentages does that answer your question like, well it seems like most of the riparian area is already forested the only places i can think of are like that one field at Grow Food Northampton and then um, up in Leeds, sort of. Yeah, I'd have to, I i don't know the exact specific area. She had some, oh, we want to try to look at blah, blah, blah. And I didn't really know where that was. So um, I'm going to meet with her and communicate. Okay. Yeah, It's just okay. that we can't just plant anywhere, you know. I think they're looking for, you know, slow down flood water and, you know, different things like that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had a bad, terrible flood. Ah, uh, you're muted, Rich. Thank you. That's uh, that's a good explanation. There are a lot of moving parts for that planting, and I think we're going to try to assist them the best that we can and try to provide trees where we can uh, through the setback planting program. Mm -hmm. um, Sue, I just wanted to swing back to you and ask, are you all set for volunteers for the WIP giveaway? Oh. Uh, is that, you have all the, you have the times filled in? Um, so that I still can't like speak to it exactly, but okay. um, I'll put a big star here to check with Vicki. Do you have some okay. ideas? No, I was just, I, I'm recalling at the last meeting, you were asking if people had some time to fill in a few slots yeah, I was particularly I looking for somebody who could be on site nine to noon on 
preferably like someone from the commission who could be on site nine to noon on the Saturday, which is, I think is the 27th. And, um, you know, there'd be volunteers there giving out the whips, but people come by and they, um, you know, have questions, concerns about Northampton tree program. It's a city event staffed by volunteers. And we've always had somebody there who's comfortable basically just saying, you need to talk to the tree warden about that and taking the name and passing it along to Rich just so they feel like there's somebody there who represents um, the city interests or th th they can access um, with with some kind of concern or something. So nine to noon on the Saturday, um, just to have somebody, they, I've always played that role, like made sure I was there or Alicia was there or um, that's basically who's staffed it. And um, it was always somebody who, who the volunteers can ask questions or, you know, who signs in the volunteers. I think Jordan just volunteered. Oh, really? Is that yeah. right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. You're looking down too. Fantastic. I can circle back with like exactly what the requirements are. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, it's and pretty low key. It's fun. It's nice. And then, you know, to tell people to start breaking down at the end. And um, oftentimes, um, I've been going to the farmer's market if they're with the bucket of trees, if there's too many of something left over and um and just kind of say there's free trees and and then the farmers always you know they'll all take them if you have too many i've given i don't know five or six to to a farmer um sometimes people stop by during and say if you have extra trees you know call me or something just kind of wrap the thing up and then if there are extra trees to figure out what to do with them i try to get them all gone by the time I leave and that the last two years I've actually gone to the farmer's market with a bucket towards the end and said well, we got trees the other thing we may need help with is and I can get more clear on that this we have some once we go down to the nursery we have some um during COVID we couldn't do part of tree giveaway and we had these lilacs and so we have pots, small pots of stuff in the nursery, some shrubs, some small trees that really we can't use for our street tree planting. So we talked last meeting and I, Rich said it was okay to, we might need some help getting those, like I have a truck, Sue has a truck, we can load them in there and just, mm -hmm. you know, put them down there on Friday or Thursday night or something um, to, that we can also give those away because we, we just can't really, use them and it we get a little convoy going uh, yeah that's Toyota right right convoy. right right that's right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so i'll more to be revealed on that maybe i'll i'll contact vicky or something i think but that's I'll, a great idea because we haven't figured out a plan for those trees we hoped to last fall it didn't come together you know we don't want them just getting sick around our good nice new trees and all in their pots for years and years stuff. Yeah, got to move them. Right. I have a, a question. There used to be a, a place within the community garden where a bunch of black walnuts were planted. Rob and I spent some time there. Is that, could they be planted there? Do you mean the Grow Food Community Garden or the other one? No, the one uh, by the uh, Hospital Hill, sort of behind there. We have trees sited there for this spring planting. Mm -hmm. but not all these lilacs and stuff. I think, I think David, you're referring to the, there was a, for a while we had a tree nursery up there in yeah, several plots. Right. Yeah. That's not happening anymore. Is it Sue? It's on a very limited basis. Paul Green is doing some very small tree seedlings there, experiments in seedling trays. They're these structures that he's built 
um, but it's much smaller. We gave back the most of the land because our um, focus was really, it was, you know, is on planting trees. And again, it's one of these projects. It sounds like a lot of fun, but we have so much on our plate, just get it, keeping the planting project going. Yeah, we just couldn't keep it cleaned up. I think we didn't have enough volunteers that were interested in doing the dirty work up there. Yeah. And it was a lot of watering and people would go yeah. on vacation and the people would have to juggle, you know, who was on watering duty and it was hard to keep up and then we'd get weedy and, um, but now it's like very much mulched and it's just these structures with, these really baby trees seeing if we can take in from some trees around town that were really nice to see if we can get some little seedlings. But um, I think probably if we have them there on Friday in the potted trees, I'm hoping people will take them because, you know, we're giving away whips, which are so small and that they'll, they'll think, Oh, this is a great deal. I can get a potted tree. Otherwise, I'm not sure. Maybe we could do something with social media. I'll unload them. Free is always, you know, people like free. Yeah. I got no problem unloading them. I'll yeah. talk them up. All right. I like I like this. This is good. <laughs> this is good. Clean the nursery out. Um. Okay, it's six so minutes. Yep. There's uh, any other questions about the spring planting Arbor Day? I mean, I just have to follow up. I have, I did get the email from Alicia about the trench, the uh, dig safes photographs. I will take care of that tomorrow. Um, I have to circle back and fix some of the other issues from the first batch that we have. So I will work on those as well. I will change the, um, setback agreement to reflect the uh, the comments and corrections from today um and then um i'm i'm waiting to get an email back from uh chestnut ridge because we altered we we increased our order ask from them for um tree stock so i we they're going to hopefully deliver next week and then amherst nursery will deliver the tree stock we need for ice pond drive before the event on the 20th so I think we're, we, we have oh, a plan. I have a little question. Sure. Rob, this is our first spring without Rob. And he used to do an exercise where we do a, a really small tree planting, just a couple of trees before we did a big planting with a group. And it kind of just got everybody kind of oriented for that first time. Because it's amazingly, you kind of forget there's things you forget. I don't know what they are. I forgot, but <laughs> <laughs> so you're, is so there we, any chance right, we, I mean, we could, we could something before we, the twentieth. We could if we if all the stars align and we have all of our stock, or if we have stock from the nursery that we could use, like on the seventeenth, that would be like a Wednesday planting. It's possible. See if I can I don't know what, I don't know if we'll have, it's the third. Uh, I, we were probably wanting to dig safe that, that uh, first group that got a little goofed up. I think that would be part of the first plantings, right? Because we don't um, have anything that's actively dig safe. Mm -hmm. right. What I mean by dig safe is like, it's not follow through with the trench permit. Right, the trench right. permit. So I need to. Was uh, the community garden on that one? Yes. I that might so. be a nice chill place to okay. go through the motions let me uh let me that would note be five myself. trees yep yeah okay or we could schedule them for later no i think it would be good i mean if the weather if the weather's right and we have the stock i don't see why we can't we can't do it let so me just, we'll uh, be in touch rich yeah. so i can get that going if okay you know, we can figure that out yeah we should probably touch base tomorrow if you're available yeah, uh, tomorrow's Thursday, yes. Okay, all right. I'll just shoot you a text and we'll figure out a good time to connect. Yep. Um. Any other? Oh, I have, I have uh, Molly, before you, <laughs> 18 and 7. 
you asked me, it's 18 years as Tree City USA, and this will be our seventh year with a growth award. Wow. Yeah. So we're doing we're 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 doing uh, we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. Anyways, 18, go ahead. I'm sorry. Tree. 18 yeah. is great. Yes. Molly. I have a business not anticipated. Absolutely. Um, In the last couple of weeks, there have been some, I think maybe two letters to the Gazette about yes. related to trees. Um, yes. Have you or should we respond to them somehow? They've already been responded to. Oh. But in person, like you just contacted the people individually? uh i the the one uh there was so basically the one resident was contacted via email the other resident i did not contact mm -hmm. and i typically uh we typically don't you know when i when we interface with residents when there's a tree problem when a resident calls about a problem or if i've identified a problem or someone else has identified a problem and we have to do something with the tree um typically i don't interface with people that send uh, letters to the editor. Right. So, but yes, the the one resident, uh, one of the residents, the tree situation, um, you know, that that was their commentary about it and, and I can't really speak to it. So, yeah, because typically when there's, just for your information, when there's a claim, when there's a claim for property damage, uh, from uh, uh, anything that's uh, city related, in this case, it's a public shade tree. Once that claim has been filed at the city clerk's office, then the city's insurer takes the claim and does all the legwork. There's no other communication between the uh, executive branch and uh, the claimant. Oh. So the insurer manages all of it. So that's also kind of a, that's just been the policy forever that we've had. Because mm -hmm. it's a it's an insurance claim, but yeah, I'm I'm aware of them, and I have talked to one of them. Yes. Okay, that's all. There, there was, was also nice... one today, more on a yeah. positive note. Yeah. Uh, that parking lot that's at the corner of King Street and Finn. Um, that oh, is yes. Finn, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There, yep. there, yeah, the there was just forward. yeah, there was just kind of a nice uh, um, vision. The editor saying. It, why don't we make this a, a mitigation of urban heat island and put in a big forest and then you don't have to worry about the contaminated soil and blah 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 so it was just it was kind of a cool I was kind of related to what we were we've been talking about with these you know small mixed uh tiered foresty areas and you know so it was just kind of interesting it's uplifting yeah yes any other? Um, um, real quick, if I may, Bonnie, yeah. um, <clears throat> excuse me, I apologize. I was driving at the beginning of the meeting and my audio was uh, poor. So if I may change my vote of acceptance of last week's meeting from ex abstention to um, acceptance. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Jordan. Any other business not anticipated by the chair? So our next meeting will be May 1st, Wednesday, May 1st. Okay. Okay. I will send out a agenda. And I mean, so we're basically, and we're going to end up not having probably this, unless you want me to continue it, but I can send out a call for agenda items. If you have specific things you'd like to talk about, because we've had the same things sort of the last, two months because we're trying to finish these projects up. So, okay. Uh, Sorry, I didn't hear that. Do you want to um, maybe have a speaker? Uh, I could have a speaker. I mean, um, if you, if folks on the commission have someone they'd like to hear from, um, I might be able to rope in um, a tree warden from another community that might be interested in actually introducing themselves. Um, so there's, yeah, I mean, I, I can send, I'll send an email and people can sort of ponder. All right. Okay. Uh, any other business before I ask for no business? Okay. We have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please. 
I will. Okay, we have a second. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, just raise your hands, please. Thank you very much, everyone.